Okay, so in this class, we'll discuss the features of digital devices. So let's begin the class. Okay, so first of all, uh, there are three main features. The first one is the portability, performance, and connectivity. Okay, the digital devices you use have several features such as portability, performance, and connectivity. Uh, connectivity is a device ability to connect to a network or the other devices. So for example, when you uh, connect your uh, digital device to a Wi-Fi, that is also called connectivity. Or when you connect your uh, digital device, for example, your phone with a, with a Bluetooth speaker, so that is also called the connectivity. Uh, for a device to be a portable, it needs to be easy to carry and move around. A portable device is small and lightweighted. So a portable device has a built-in battery, internet connection, so and you can move it around everywhere easily. For example, the phone, your laptop, and all those devices are called the portable devices. Uh, a high-performance device performs its job or task quickly. So if your uh, device is high-performance, it means it can perform your jobs quickly. For example, if you want to play some game on the on the phone, it can smoothly play that game. Or if you want to open some software, for example, Photoshop, so it can. Uh, run the Photoshop very smoothly. For example, if your device performance is not very good, you uh, and then you open the Photoshop inside your laptop. So, for example, when you click on something, you have to wait. Okay, so that device will slowly per perform that operation, and then you can go to the next section. But if the performance of your device is good, you just need to click. It will done complete the task, and you move on to the next uh, next next task. Okay, so the performance of device can be measured by the following three factors. Based on the, those following three factors, we can measure if a device performance is good or bad. So those factors include the CPU, RAM, and the storage. Okay, so the CPU executes the software instructions, hence a quicker processor improves the performance. So if your processor is, 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 is quicker, it means it can perform the, the perform operation very quickly. Okay? So next one is the instructions are loaded into CPU from the RAM. So it means faster RAM allows the instruction to be loaded into the CPU faster. Okay? So this is the second factor. And third one is the virtual memory. So virtual memory is utilized when the RAM is full. So fast storage means fast faster virtual memory access. So these are the main three factors that influence uh, device performance. So now let's talk about the storage. So, so files and programs are stored in the storage. For example, if you save some file in the laptop, or maybe you take some picture from your phone. So those all things are stored inside the, the, the storage. Or also, for example, if you download some software on your phone or install some software on your laptop. So all those things are also stored inside the storage. Okay. So uh, more available storage allow the user to store more files and programs uh, and programs. Storage speed also affects the performance. Okay. So for example, if you have an iPhone 64G, so it means you can store some, some files and videos, but after some time you will get the notification that your storage is full. So this means if you have the more storage, you can store more files and install more pr programs. If you have less storage, you can uh, save less files and install less programs. Uh, a file. So now let's talk about the, the some terminology. The first one is a file. What is a file? A file is a collection of data representing a document, image, database, or the similar thing. So a, a, a file always ends with a, an extension. For example, a file name .pdf or a file name .png or a file name .docx. Okay. So this is the file name. So file is contain the data. For example, image. Image could be a PNG, JP, JPEG, or GIF. Right. So all those images contain some data. Or file. Maybe the PDF file contains some text. Right. So those are the, the files. The called those are those things are called called the files. Okay. That have the data. So what is a program? A program is a set of instructions carried out uh, by a processor. So software basically, uh, uh, the software program is kind of a set of instructions that you use to perform different operations on the files. For example, uh, you need a Photoshop. Photoshop is a program to, to, to edit the images, right? You need a word processing software, for example, WPS or Microsoft Word to perform different action on the operation or actions on the, the word files, the documents, okay? So this is the difference between files and the programs. So now let's talk about the UI. So what is UI? UI or the user interface. User give command to the device using the UI. There are several different types of UI. Okay. So let's talk about the, those types. For, for example, we have the GUI or graphical user interface. We have manual driven interface. We have CLI or command line interface. We have gesture interface and we have the voice interface. So these are the five different types of uh, uh, user interfaces and why we need the user interface because user give commands to the device using the, the one of those interfaces. Okay. The first type of interface is called the CLI or the command line interface. So when using a CLI, user enter text instructions and the computer system provide result or feedback as text. Okay? So you can see the picture. This is called the CLI. This is also called the, the, the command, com uh, DOS or command okay? or terminal maybe in some operating system. So in this one, you need to type the command. For example, if you want to copy one file uh, to another another place, so you need to type the command copy and then the file name and then you really want to paste. So you need to type everything. Okay? For example, if you want to delete something, you need to also type the delete command and then specify the file or folder name that you want to delete or if you want to create a new folder so here you need to type okay so type the command for creating a new folder and then you can type the folder name that you want to delete and then you can uh, delete that folder so such interface is often found on the older system uh, for uh, or for devices with limited storage as it requires little memory so this type of uh, 
uh, interface is usually found on the older computers. Right? If you have the older computer, they don't have the GUI or the graphical user interface. We'll talk about the GUI in the next slide. But GUI have the icons and pictures, but this type of interface have no image, okay? only text. So this type of interface is usually found on the older PC because in the in the old days or the, in, in the past, we don't have the much storage. Nowadays, we have like terabytes of storage. We can have terabytes of storage, but uh, in, in the past, we, we can just have the uh, two bytes, four bytes, something like that. So on those the small uh, amount of storage, we cannot store pictures and those things. So that's why this type of interface usually found on the older computer or maybe on some devices that, that doesn't have the more storage. Okay? So command have to be typed precisely because interface only recognize certain commands. So in the command interface, you need to memorize all the commands and you need to type all the commands precisely. You cannot uh, mistake in the command name. For example, you can see in the above picture here, I type the command. The, the correct command is CLS, okay? Clear the, the terminal screen, okay? But I type it as CSL. So it says CSL is not recognized as internal or external command, okay? So here you can see, you, when you want to do some operation, you first need to write the command precisely. For example, if you want to delete something, you need to type the delete command precisely. Or if you want to copy something, first you need to write the, that command correctly. If you misspell the command, then you won't be able to to do the operation using the, the CLI. So this could be one of the big disadvantage of the CLI. But uh, there is a, uh, there is usually a help menu for the user that lists and explain the acceptable command. So when you open the, the terminal or the command interface, you type the help command and you will get all the commands that that uh, that could be used inside that interface. Okay. So you can just learn uh, different commands like performing different acts, for example, how to copy, delete, new, create new folder or, or so many commands. So you can just uh, check the commands in, in, in the help section and learn and then you can apply. So that's it for the command line interface. Now let's move to the next interface called the menu driven interface. Okay, so this type of interface display a list of options as menu. So as you can see in the picture, you have list of options as a menu. So by selecting one of these uh, will trigger a command or display another menu with further options. So there are two things happens. For example, if you choose one, click on one option, okay? So uh, from the list, you will see another list of commands or maybe it just uh, performed the action. For example, if you go to the bank to withdraw some money from the ATM machine, so ATM machines, they use this type of interface. So for example, you need to click, okay, oh, I want, what, what you want to do, I want to withdraw the money or deposit the money, you need to click, and then you input the, the code, whatever you want to do, uh, amount, okay, and then press confirm, and then you'll get the money, right, like this. So the one disadvantage of this one, um, they are easier to use than the CLI because you don't have to remember the commands to type precisely, but they take more time as you have to go through the menu structure each time you want to carry out uh, come on. Okay, so for example, if you want to withdraw the money, you first time you just go to the menu, you enter the password and the amount, and then you confirm. If you want to withdraw more money, you have to then start from the beginning. Okay, so you have to go back and start from the beginning from the home and do all things, all all the operations. So that is this is one kind of disadvantage of the the, the menu driven interface. This type of interface is used in many devices, including the ATMs, televisions, and older mobile phones. So that's all about the the menu driven interface. Now let's talk about the GUI or the graphical user interface. A GUI is controlled by a pointer. So what is a pointer? Pointer, uh, pointer is what? Uh, this one you can see on the screen. This arrow is called the pointer. So and how we control this pointer? We control this pointer using the, the pointing devices. Okay, for, for example, the trackpad, mouse, or some other devices. Okay. So uh, a GUI controlled by a pointer on the screen and uses a screen made up of the windows, icons, and menu. So there are three main components of the GUI. Number one is windows, okay? Number two is icons, and number three is menu, okay? So now let's discuss. So window are the area of the screen uh, that are dedicated to application or the operating system task. For example, uh, when you open Microsoft Word, so you can see you have different different options. Those options are related to the, the text processing, right? If you open the PowerPoint, PowerPoint also has some different options. If you compare Word and the PowerPoint options, they are different. So when you open the window, that, that, that when you open a program, you open a window, right? That window contains different options depending on the program. For example, if you open the Photoshop, so Photoshop options are totally different from the, the, the Word and the PowerPoint, okay? So that is called the window. Next one is the icon. Okay, so what is what are the icon? Icon are the small images that represent an application that can be selected with the pointer to open an application. So as you can see, when you start some program on your laptop, you have one icon, for example, Photoshop icon or a Word icon, or the PowerPoint icon. Okay, so that is the small picture that you see. Okay, on, on your on your desktop or maybe in the start menu. Okay, so that is called the icon. So when you click on the icon, it opens the program. Okay, so that is what icon. Okay, so next thing is the menu. So menu provide the option for the task relating to the operating system or open application. So for example, when you want to delete something, okay, so you need to right click on the file or and then choose you see a menu and from the menu you can choose delete or copy or cut or whatever you want to do. Okay, you can choose the, the different command from the menu. Similarly, you have different uh, menus inside the program. As you can see in the picture, I uh, you have a menu here. Okay, so this is the menu inside the program. So that, that, that's all about the menu. Okay, so one disadvantage of this type of interface is this, uh, this is easier 
easiest type of interface to use, but it takes up more memory and storage than this than a CLI and the manual driven interface. So if you compare the GUI with CLI and the uh, manual driven interface, GUI take more storage. Okay, so it's, that's why we cannot run the GUI on the some older system, and that's why you can see when you download a install a Windows on the on some laptop. Okay, so it says okay you need maybe 64 uh, GB uh, RAM, uh, sorry storage so for to install this one, or maybe 20 GB or 30 GB depending on the which version of uh, Windows you are installing. So that's all about the GUI. Next type of interface is called the voice interface. So this device, the device have the voice recognition software which matches the spoken word against the library of words to find a match. Okay, so this type of interface usually work when you have the internet connected. You need to first connect your device to the internet and then this device contain a, 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 a voice recognition software okay? so that can recognize your voice. So and it has the different commands that are stored online on the cloud. Okay, So when you say something, okay, or oh, uh, turn on the light, okay, you can just say to Alexa, turn on the light. So Alexa will find words mean by the, those words from, uh, from the cloud and then perform the operation. Okay? So next one is the, a voice interface allow user to give spoken commands to the device. So you speak and the, 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 the voice interface performed that action, uh, whatever you said, whatever you say to that device. So to save the storage on the device, the library of words is often stored online. So these devices usually require internet connection. Okay? So you need internet, first you need to connect that device to the internet and then you can uh, interact with that device and give different commands and it will perform different operations for you. Next one, the disadvantage sometimes the software cannot find a match or return incorrect match. Is which produce unwanted results. So for example, sometimes you ask him to do something, but it misunderstood you, uh, what you were trying to say, and it will do something else, right? So that is one problem in the voice interface. So for this reason, the voice interface sometimes check the instruction with the user before searching for a match. And some voice interface use the result of the confirmation uh, to learn the device, uh, to learn the voice of the user and improve the future matches. So that's how this, this thing we learn, okay? So now let's talk about where we use those devices and what are the advantages of the, uh, this type of interface. So advantages is hand-free operation is possible using the voice interface. You don't need to uh, you touch the device, okay? You just need to say word from your mouth and then you can uh, perform different operation, okay? So these mean that they are often used in vehicles and other in order to improve the road safety, yeah. So for example, if you're dri driving, okay, and you want to play some song. So if you don't have the voice interface, then you have to probably go to the, open the phone, okay, unlock the phone and then open the Spotify and find the song and then you need to click the press button. So this is not uh, safe, right? You are driving the car on the road. So uh, what you can do, you can just say, okay, hey Siri, kindly play this song on Spotify like that. That's it. So when you uh, give a command, that voice interface automatically uh, find the song and then play the song for you. Okay, so next type of interface is called the gesture interface. So such interface allow users to control the device by swapping their finger uh, finger or fingers over uh, across the screen. So you can control those uh, uh, devices by, by swapping your fingers on the, the screen. Okay, so this type of interface is commonly found on devices with touch screen. So you all you know about those interfaces because you have the smartphone. Okay? So smartphone these days they have the touch screens and you use uh, the touch screen to interact with the, with the phone. So we have a different, for example, you can tab, you can swap with the two fingers. Finger, you can pinch, zoom, and do different operations using your fingers uh, on the gesture interface. So that's it about the. That's all about the gesture interfaces or the UI user interfaces. Now let's talk about the connectivity. Okay. So device can share data by connecting to each other using wired or wireless connection. So there are two methods that the two devices can communicate to each other or send or receive data uh, from each other. The first one is the wireless connectivity. We have the, the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and the second one is called the wired connectivity. Okay. So you use connect uh, connect two devices using the wire. For example, you connect your phone uh, to the laptop using the wire. Okay. So you have a USB cable. You just plug the USB cable into your laptop, and then the other side you just uh, plug the uh, the phone in the other side of the cable, and then you connect and you can transfer things. So two things, two types of connectivity, right? Wireless and wired connectivity. So uh, connectivity can be used to update software, backup files, or play media uh, from one device to another, another device. So, yeah, you can use the connectivity to update for update a, a device. For example, if you want to update a software, so you, you need internet connectivity, right? So you can connect your phone with the Wi-Fi or maybe with the cellular data, and then you can go and update or install some new apps. You can also use this one to backup files. For example, you have some files on your uh, phone, and then you want to backup to the cloud. So that's, uh, you also need the connectivity. And other one is the play media from one device to other device. For example, you have Bluetooth, Bluetooth speakers at, at your home, right? And you want to play some song uh, from your phone to those speakers. So first you need to connect your phone with those Bluetooth speakers and then play the song from your phone. And then you can 
listen the music from those speakers. So those different types of connectivity, okay? Okay, so different connectivity types provide different speed of data transfer and level of convenience. So different types of connectivity have different advantages or disadvantages. Okay, so speed is also varies. So for example, if you connect your laptop with the cable, the so speed with the cable is fast. If you connect your phone or the laptop with the Wi-Fi, so Wi-Fi speed depends on the signal, right? So if you're close to the Wi-Fi, your speed will be good. If you go far from the device, uh, Wi-Fi, your speed, your signal will drop and your speed will also fluctuate, right? So it, it won't be consistent. So, so wired connectivity is usually faster and more reliable. So, yeah, as, as we said, if you use a wire, the, the, the speed is much faster. But if there's a problem with the wired uh, connectivity, uh, it introduces additional cost. You need to buy the cables, okay? And mess, yeah, of course, if you have the cable, you have a mess at home in the room. And convenience and the safety risk, such as tripping, especially for the younger children. So, there are so many problems with the, with the cables. Uh, but still, uh, the speed is faster if you compare with the uh, Wi-Fi. So, yeah, you can try both or... Okay, so next feature, next feature is called the media support. Okay, so different devices can read data from and write data to different types of media. Example, SD card, micro SD card, flash memory card, and DVDs. Okay, so what does it mean by reading and writing data? Reading data means, for example, if you have, uh, you copy some so song to a USB, that means you're writing something on the USB. Or if you're playing something from a USB or some storage media, this means you're reading data from that storage. Okay, so that is mean by the reading and writing. So, so that's it. Next one is the if device does not have the built-in media media adapters. Adapters can be uh, connected uh, connected to provide the connectivity to external devices. Example, the card reader. Okay, so card you can use the card reader and connect that card reader using the USB port and connect uh, and copy read or write the data on to the that storage. Okay. Next feature is called the energy consumption. So little devices require electricity to work. One benefit of lower energy consumption in mobile devices is the longer battery life. So if your uh, phone consumes less energy, it means your battery can last a very long time. But if your phone uses a lot of, consumes a lot of energy, so it means you have to charge your phone or the laptop two or three times a day. Okay? So uh, due to the raising energy cost and the customers uh, and customers and the government pressure, manufacturers are building more energy efficient digital products. Okay? So the aim of uh, this is to save their customers money and demonstrate the social responsibility such as by reducing the environmental damage. So that's all about the energy consumption. So if your uh, phone is consuming or your laptop is consuming less energy, so it means it's energy efficient. Okay. So next feature uh, is called the expansion capabilities. So what does it mean by the expansion capabilities? So some pieces allow users to install additional components. Okay. So uh, smartphones and tablet devices have expansion slots to allow them to make use of the flash memory cards for the Android phones. You can, you can insert the SD card and extend the storage. So that is called the extension, uh, expansion capability. Uh, systems can also be expanded using the port, such as via USB, allow user to, to uh, connect extra devices, for example, peripheral devices. For example, you can see your laptop. You can connect different devices to your laptop via USB cable. For example, some, some uh, uh, laptop have the SD card reader built in. Then you can just plug the, the card and read the data from the card. Or maybe you can use the USB port to connect different preferred devices, for example, the microphone or maybe the keyboard or the wireless mouse or something like that. So all those things are called the expansion capability. So this is also uh, the, one of the features of the little device. Next feature is called the security feature. Okay, so what is the security feature? So the data store on the digital device may be private, valuable, or both. Right. So for example, if a company boss in, in a company in a company boss phone have some very important data relating to their business, that is why if someone can get access to that that data, he can destroy him. Right. So that is why those devices also need a security feature to secure the data of the user. So how how we can secure the data? For example, we can use the the, the face ID, or maybe we can use the PIN, or maybe we can use the fingerprint. Okay. So these are the things we can use to protect our data on digital devices. So this means that the device need to have security features to keep their users data safe. Yes. So we have important data in our device and we need a security feature to keep our data safe. Okay. So lock screen, password, biometrics and the pins are used to prevent unauthorized access to the data on the original device. Okay. So these are the different methods we use to to prevent unauthorized users to access our data. We can use the pin, face ID and there are some other methods mentioned here. So these are the security features are built in inside the the, the, the device, digital devices. Next one is called the physical physical uh, security. Okay, so physical security prevent theft is also vital. Uh, is also vital. Okay, so devices use security locks, uh, which can have locks attached to secure them to, to, to secure them to furniture. Okay, so this device when you go to some some uh, Apple store or maybe some other vendor. Okay, so you see all the uh, laptop or the the phones they are connected to some sort of slot like we can see in this picture okay so this means this device will protect the device from the theft okay so for example if you try to steal that laptop and detach it from this device it will just start making noise and the security guard will know that somebody is trying to steal the device so that is why this is also important 
so some uh, so some attached uh, some attached to a special slot other connected to a part on the device uh, which with, with, with special screws uh, used to secure the locks in place so there are different ways they can use to to secure the uh, to make sure the physical security of the device okay so that's it for today's class we are done with the features of virtual devices next class we discuss the different types of peripheral devices so stay tuned and see you in the next class bye